Hey guys, so we're here. Welcome to the Great Ace Attorney 2. It's here at long last, almost an entire year after I completed the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. In fact, we're 10 days shy of the anniversary. As such, uh, I understand there may be some apprehensions because of such a delay, uh, considering that this is practically a direct follow-up to the first game, but rest assured, I've covered my bases, okay? I've undergone a bit of a refresher with regards to how the first game ended, the loose ends we had yet to tie up, such as Asogi's freaking name appearing on a Morse code list along with Jay Wilson and a few other names we, uh, well, one actually that we didn't quite recognize at the time. I've reacquainted myself with the game mechanics and controls. I've also kept my British accent somewhat maintained thanks to a playthrough of Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> Hopefully I can slip right back into character for some of our favorites like Shomes, Van Zeeks. I don't know for sure if Van Zeeks is actually making a return, but I'm pretty sure our great detective Sherlock, or Herlock Shomes, sorry, <laughs> is going to continue with his dances and deductions and he's going to invite us to tango with him. But uh, yeah, I gotta apologize for how long it's taken to get to the series if you'd watched my first playthrough. And if you haven't, I recommend you do so before starting this one. Uh, you might be aware that my son was born just as I closed it out, so it's only fitting I'm starting this playthrough now, just after we celebrated his first birthday. Uh, in any case, we're ready to roll. I've heard great... <laughs> Great things about the great Ace Attorney 2, and that it's on par with the original trilogy even, so I'm, I'm excited to jump back in. Uh, as per usual though, you're more than welcome to comment so long as it's kept spoiler free. We've also got a Discord where we shoot the breeze now and then, so stop on by if you're interested. We can talk about the great Ace Attorney 2 or other games covered on this channel, or just games in general, or whatever you want. Anyway, let's go make some tea and crumpets. I mean, no, let's start a new game. That's what I want to do. Okay, hopefully there's no trivia test, because... While I did undergo a refresher, I'm not sure if I took in every single detail uh, of what happened in the previous game, simply because I didn't have the time. I do remember Susato had moved along back to Japan. Standing here in the bright sunshine, to see her father. Looking out over the vast ocean. Those days in London seem like a dream. But I do miss my time in England's vast capital. I hope she made it back in time. That's me! You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment, he's fighting some noble cause in court. Uh, without you, Susato, I'm a, I'm a helpless man. I promise. I'm a puppet without a string. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Uh oh. Just two months after arriving home. I find myself faced with another awful crime. No! Not Giselle Brett! So She's made I a came return? Today to ask something of you. Tomorrow? I shall be standing in court for the only time in my life as a lawyer. Oh. Oh, okay. What on earth is going on? We're jumping straight into this. <gasps> so please. She's the victim. I ask for your guidance. Kazuma-sama. Oh, it's Kazuma's grave. Of course it is. He was shipped back to Japan. Well, well. All right. The Blossoming Attorney. The Adventure of the Blossoming Attorney. Neat. We get to play as Susato. As a lawyer. I'm presuming, of course. 13th of August, 8.26 a.m. Supreme Court of Judicature. Defendants, Antechamber 3. Here I am again. After nine months. The Supreme Court of Judicature of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Ah, oh, Daddy! You're alive! Ah, oh, good you're here. Doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You've got a fine figure, Counsel. I'm just gonna get. <laughs> okay, I admit I forgot the voice I gave Mikotoma, but let's just give him a British accent, simply because they're studying English. But you look as white as a sheet. 
And those wide eyes aren't doing you any favours either. Oh dear. The truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous I feel utterly nauseated. Almost wish that I'd never been born. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I didn't mean. I, I wish you pulled out. Okay. Goodness. Uh, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter. I must say, especially this early in the morning. <clears throat> well, he's smiling anyway. Eugene Mikotoba, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yumei University, a man who, early in his life, travelled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science, and of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me. Oh, hello. Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? <laughs> Sorry, my voice changed suddenly. Uh, oh, y um, yes, that's right, miss. Well, I, um... I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear, I swear in my life. It's a complete fabrication, the whole thing. Okay. Well, she's bombastic already. Ray Mimbami. Born the same year as I, and my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the University Research Laboratory, helping my father. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial. You killed Giselle Brett somehow? Accused of committing a truly awful murder. Hmm. Are you feeling alright? Since we started talking, you seem... Well to become a little flushed. Oh my, um, well, um, it's just that he looks so gallant and dashing. Oh, oh, oh my. S sorry? And when I fall under your intense gaze, it, uh, well, it makes me feel rather bashful. Uh, oh my, okay, all right, okay. <clears throat> well, I can lay down the law later if you know what I mean. I mean, goodness, I, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. <laughs> it would seem our little plan for this trial is going to work. Oh? What, what do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? What What plan? You planning for us to start a relationship? If even your best friend can't see through the disguise, I think we can relax. Disguise? Oh no. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yes, uh, I've never tried dressing this way before, of course, so I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. <laughs> We're not so sure But this does make me feel a little relieved, as you say, Father. F father? What? Is, is that... Is that you, Sisato? I'm so sorry I didn't say something sooner, Ray. It's just that... No! What are you doing? What's going on? What? I, I was turned on by you. That varsity uniform, that varsity cap, that varsity cape, that varsity badge. Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student of the Imperial Yume University! A male student! I'm so glad you think so. It means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke up four this morning to make a start. I'm still working on deepening my voice though. I'm still working on deepening my voice though. I woke up four this morning to make a start. But, but, I don't understand. Why are you dressed like that? Well, you see... Um... It was the only way. The only way she would be permitted into the Supreme Court to take on your defense in this trial. My... my defense? Someone's got to do it. Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated at being born into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. I wonder, is our defendant allowed to step foot in the courtroom? But women are forbidden. I mean, Giselle Brett did testify last time, so surely witnesses are okay. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door. So that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Susato, you'd go to such lengths for me? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I mean, Kazuma did it for Rinosuke, right? Of course we'd do it for our friend. I just worry that I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Oh no, I have complete faith in you. Ray. Mm, it's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet just because you're a woman. What a wretched reason. I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? 
You're so gallant and dashing. Oh, I'm glad you still think so, despite the disguise. I was I was concerned. I, I was concerned that was just a one-off thing. Um, Ray, please don't look at me like that. Those flushed cheeks and doting eyes. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm just. You really do look so dashing. I was selling the fact that you're a boy, you know. Uh, yes, you mentioned that once or twice. Please. My uh, my cheeks are so red and hot that they're going to burn my beard off. <laughs> you should be pleased. It means you look convincing as a man. I am pleased. I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence today. Hmm. Ray... You're managing to put on a brave face in all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders are slumped and how you're trembling ever so slightly. It's okay, I'll be your Mulan. Susato, you do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I I couldn't have. I, I mean, murder. Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Which uh, we probably will get dangerously close to once or twice. Though it's just a tutorial case, so it's okay. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Susato. Defendant! Counsel! Court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Okay. You should go in at once, Ray. If you're late, the judge won't hesitate to pronounce you guilty. I, uh, stand aside! Okay. I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Well, she's in. Well, Susato, you've certainly surprised your father. Going to such lengths to be admitted into the courtroom, and with no prior experience of being a lawyer. I mean, we've seen enough of it, right? Surely we just have to imitate Rinosuke. We just need to get our pointer finger ready. And uh, make sure we say objection with gusto, not that wimpy Rinosuke whale, okay? I hope he's approved it in this one. Because seriously, man, it, 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 it's missing that oomph, you know? There was simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father, you haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this. Yes, quite right. I've kept that information from her. It would only worry her if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. Oh, fantastic. I'm the last resort, obviously. I mean, why else am I in disguise? I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true? The reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? <clears throat> we should be making a move now, too. As you know, law isn't my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Well, I'm Susato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. How many times have I wished that he were here, I wonder. Still... I have no choice now but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Whew. Wish me luck, Marahodo-san. We don't need luck. We just need to turn about this trial. We just need to focus on the contradictions. We need a bluff. And, uh, okay, maybe we do need a little bit of luck. Just a little bit. 13th of August, 9 a.m., Supreme Court of Judicature, Courtroom 1. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean... Could be worse. The court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray Mimbami. The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. <clears throat> well, I mean, we're already pulling off the ultimate bluff here. Defense counsel, are you ready? Yes, Your Excellency. We are ready. Ready! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, uh, yes, counsel. According to your registration details, your name is, um, Ryutaro Naruhodo. Is that correct? Present! Um, uh, <clears throat> sorry? Oh, she's got the same bug eyes as, as Ryanosuke. Oh, that's so cute. Adorable. 
Oh yes, I had to come up with a suitable male name for you for this little venture. So I'm afraid to say I simply put down the first name that sprung to mind. I hope you're just whispering this, Mikotoba, and not saying it out loud. Well, Council! Ah, uh, um, yes, that's right. Uh, that's me. I'm, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Yes, I'm Ritaro, who, who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhodo clan. Uh, okay. It seems Ritaro may need to consider how better to uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. <laughs> Gee, thanks. And those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naru Hodo? A fresh face in this courtroom, if I'm not mistaken. But the name Naru Hodo, ah, would that perchance be? You may be thinking of Ryanosuke Naru Hodo, currently in Britain as part of a study program because he beat your ass in the first case. This is, um, his cousin. <laughs> That's right. Ritaro here has been studying in the provinces, but was called to the capital for this trial. Sorry, I missed your uh, interjection there, Ritaro. I assure you, in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any of Tokyo's preeminent lawyers. Any of them? Tut, tut, tut. What a pitiful situation. Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused has had to call in a country boy. <laughs> How dare you! Sasato is every bit as gallant and dashing as any of your Tokyo attorneys. <gasps> I mean, what? I won't have you making fun of her. Her? Uh, <laughs> oh, um, uh... Please be careful, Ray. <laughs> what an unrefined tomboy we have here. But I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Looks like a wuss to me. Oh, I'm so nervous. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what naruhoto san goes through. I should probably stop doing Sato takedowns on him now. Nah, <laughs> forget that. Like it or not, the eyes are... want to flit? <laughs> oh god, a close-up. Hang in there, Sato. I mean, Ritar. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the very future of our empire. Just like the trial of nine months ago. And yet I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really pull that one off, huh? And yet for proceedings of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. Dear me. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. Perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. To determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Narahodo stood where you're standing now. Yep, same eyes. This same judge tested him as well. And even though he was just a student at the time, not even of law, he passed the test with flying colors. What I'm trying to say, Susato, is that if you fail, I'm going to need to make another kid. And I, too, will share the sentiment of wishing you were never born. <laughs> For a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you, this will be easy. So, Counsel, do you consent to answering some simple questions? Oh, those puffy cheeks. All right, it's time to prove myself. I love Susato, man. She's great. Oh, God, she's even got the same cheek slap. Yes, Your Excellency. But please do make them simple. Very well. To start with, you will state the name of the victim. Phew, that is simple. Couldn't forget that if I tried. Uh, ah. Uh, what's the matter? Are you okay? I just said it would be easy. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else now how san goes through. Like it or not, mine's ah uh, want to blank. It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position and in that guise, so I'll cut you some slack just this once. Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter a little under the circumstances. Oh dear. This is a dismal failure. I haven't even answered the first question. Don't fret. You need only use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. Huh? Of course, the court record. <laughs> My wonderful Wikipedia book that I always referred to. 
Yes, the answer will be amongst all the key information about the case in the court record. Oh, God, I'm getting the names mixed up, sorry, because I'm, I'm so used to seeing Susato and not Riotaro. <laughs> That's right. Just use E to open the court record. Then you need to flip to the People section with E. And don't take too long over it. His Excellency is watching you closely. Alright. Check the court record with the E. That's where the information I need will be. It's easy if I just make it rhyme. I can't forget the tutorial like that. I'm waiting, Counsel. What is the name of the victim in this case? <laughs> well, I mean, even if I didn't look at the court record, and I didn't know who Giselle Brett was, by process of elimination would get it right. Should I? Should I get it wrong? Uh, I mean, we gotta see the flavor text, don't we? It's ouchy. I'm a yokel. <laughs> from the country. The victim in this case is... Yes! Prosecutor Takutsu, Takatsuchi Ouchi. Gosh. <laughs> For a wrong answer, I still got the name wrong. What? Why the same triumphant cry of yes? Are you threatening to kill me? He seems angry. And you're surprised. <laughs> did you consult the court record? You must look through it carefully. Oh yes, I did, of course. I looked at everyone on file. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm lying. And I chose the person whose features appeared to be the most deathly. Huh. I must say, this most unusual methodology of yours leaves me almost speechless at how shit it is. It occurs to me with renewed certainty that reading the information carefully is vitally important. I strongly recommend it. Oh dear, I simply can't ignore that imploring look. Your Excellency, please allow me to amend my answer. Very well, I will excuse this incorrect response given your wide-eyed state of panic. <laughs> Calm down! Drink some water, damn it! What is the name of the victim in this case? Okay. <laughs> I have to. Uh, the victim in this case is none other than Professor Eugen Mikotoba. What the hell? Are you okay? Where did we find this lawyer? Well, to be written off by one's own child. Father, you... You seem suddenly so much older and warier than you were mere moments ago. Because of you, clearly! fuck's sake! The judge is asking for the victim's name! The, the person who was killed in this case! It's, it's one question! I compared you to Rian... to Rianosuke, and for some reason you're failing me. Look through the information in the court record. Again, I'm pl I'm begging you! Carefully, please! I implore you! Before you kill me, for mercy's sake! <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I'm sorry. Your Excellency... Father... Oh god, I got an achievement for it. <laughs> Father Frustrator. Your Excellency, please allow me to amend my answer. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Let's let's uh, take this seriously now. Giselle Brett. Yes. Yes, of course. Oh no, not this again. <laughs> the name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Giselle Brett. Let's actually look at the court record now. We got the postmortem report. Time of death is just after 2 p.m. Death is believed to be due to trauma to the victim's lung from a knife blade. Only a single wound was identified. In terms of people, we've got Eugene Mikotoba, of course, medical school professor at the Imperial Yume University, an authority in forensic medicine in charge of the university's laboratory. Also happens to be my father. We've got Ray Mambami. She's 16, best friend who works as an assistant to my father in his laboratory at the Imperial Yume University. Defendant in this case, Giselle Britt, she's 25, victim of the case, was a former British exchange student. Nine months ago, she was found guilty of the murder of visiting professor Dr. John Wilson, and who cares about this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, we got there. In the end. Jeez, my glasses fogged up in the meantime. Sail Pratt. A name that will never be forgotten in the courtrooms of our country, I'm sure. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. <laughs> so, let me pose another simple question. Although... I thought that last one was simple, and we ended up going on a roller coaster of emotions. As you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why, then, is her name indel indelibly associated with our own empire's judicial history? Obviously, you won't have forgotten that case from nine months ago. Obviously. Surely. Most certainly. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. But if it's proving hard to recall the finer points, everything you need is included in the court record. Obviously, I still remember. 
That was the start of everything. Giselle Brett. Behind the woman's student persona was the face of a killer. <laughs> I do want to say Queen Victoria. Just, just, just once. Last one. Last one, I promise. Oh, now we're doing the disc slam. Queen Victoria, obviously. Um... Obviously not! The Queen of England, studying overseas. I thought it sounded a little odd. Leave me out of this. <laughs> I'm sure you know all the details of the case in question from nine months ago. Please. Oh yes, how could I forget? I know every last detail about it. Then what on earth was that absurd answer you just gave? It's in your blue book! Look at it! No more absurdity, please, counsel. You will amend your answer. Yes, of course, Your Excellency. They both have to call my answer absurd. Behind the woman's student persona was the face of a killer. Yes! Of course. Okay, no hand up this time. Perfect. Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was... Giselle Brett. Yes. She was a killer. At the time, our country had just signed a new treaty with the Empire of Great Britain. And it was in the midst of this delicate diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. I believe he was an associate of yours, Professor Mikotoba. Yes, I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him here to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our soil was a matter the government wished to resolve rapidly. Indeed it was, which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. A student of the Imperial Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder. A second year English language student by the name of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense and exposed the despicable crime committed by Miss Giselle Brett. Almost like it was nine months ago. <laughs> Miss Brett eventually admitted to her crime. However, when questioned about the motive that drove her to take Dr. Wilson's life, she gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. And for some reason, we never talked to the suspect after that ever again. They dropped down a hole. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its consular jurisdiction into play. We were unable to sentence Miss Brett according to our empire's laws. It was decided that she would be removed to Shanghai, China, instead. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled upon only last week. All that remained of our empire's obligations was to see the woman safely on board a steamship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed. <gasps> Only the day before. By Ray, somehow. That will do. I'm satisfied that the counsel for the defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Only barely. She got 51% in this test. Oh. I mean, oh, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Bare, you know, tripped over it a couple of times. No, no worries. Why do we fall to get back up? All that jazz. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Alchi. Sure. <laughs> As is your wish, Your Excellency. Please, enlighten us. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th August in broad daylight. Hmm. On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, under a bright blue sky, at a secluded bathing spot by the sea. Well, he's really sitting the scene. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut, erected for bathers to rest or change their clothes. This is also the scene where we have those dancing crabs in that YouTube video. The cause of death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. An injury which proved fatal. What the hell is she doing out here? There were two persons alone together in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. 
Miss Brett in her bathing attire, and the accused, Ray Mimbami. Accordingly, there can be no doubt of the accused's guilt, especially when we consider she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? They rushed in, didn't check anything, just arrested the first person they saw. Well. <laughs> well. That extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. You should take up being an author if this gig doesn't work out, which it very well, very well may not if, uh, if we find out at the end of this trial that Ryotaro actually is a competent lawyer of some kind. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary was full of words that raise an awful lot of questions. Why was he so fixated on Giselle Brett's bathing attire? As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about a uh, powerful motive, I think. That stood out to me. You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. T -t 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 is the yokel boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? I beg your pardon. No matter. Let us put this to the accused, shall we? Mbami san, you are a research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe. Oh, is that why? Yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mikitoba in his lab laboratory at the moment. I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikitoba, whose research were you assisting then? Oh, um... Well, um, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. Dr. Dr. Wilson? The visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Brent nine months ago. I see now. Revenge plot, huh? The accused had a deep-seated respect for her former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had towards the Englishwoman who killed him. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what you'd done. A powerful hatred. Oh no, Ray! Be careful of what you're saying, please! Anything you say can and will be used against you. Ah. Uh. Ah. The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Exhibit A, she played right into my hand. God, I'm good. Well, it was clearly a trap all along. Damn it! <laughs> How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for her former mentor against her like that. I must find out more details and something we can use to bolster our defense. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about uh, the bathing spot. Why the fuck were they there? Um, if I may, Prosecutor Ouchie. What do you want, you fresh-faced young yokel student? I wonder... To explain, please. Mention a bathing spot? Hey, yeah, I go there once a year, maybe. Uh, my apologies. Clearly, my modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. God, they, they do such a good job of making him look like an asshole. Bathing spots are the very latest trend in health practices from the West. <laughs> we are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic. And excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal be relaxing by the sea? Uh. Hmm. For all time's sake, I believe. Sorry? Miss Brett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast. Really? She could have fucking... Oh my god. <laughs> and the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. Oh, okay. Alright. I uh, I retract my anger. <laughs> but but well, what grounds would we agree to such a request? Why wasn't she guarded, like, fully? She shouldn't never have left anyone's sight. Because, as usual, our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. In matters of diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. Don't look at me, Professor! It was the government who granted permission, not I! 
In any case, it was decided that with a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. Oh. But in fact, the murder took place. I, I said don't look at me. I'm, I was that young student girl who did it. Not I. You already accused me once. I was, I was actually kind of shit scared at the time. No one has proved that yet. I wouldn't provoke the man if you don't need to. Well, too late. Hmm, at this stage, I need to gather more information, I think. All right. One thing left. Being alone together. Um, Membami-san. Yes? What is it, sa- uh, I mean, um, Naruhode-san? I'm really starting to wish we'd made my alias Ryutaro Susato. <laughs> Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place. And why you were alone with her. Oh. Well, no, that's not true. I wasn't like that at all. There were other people present. A detective who was guarding Miss Brett, for starters. I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion. That's all. Why? But let us be clear, at the moment of her death, you were alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. <laughs> the truth is, there is only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brett on her bathing sojourn. It was the accused's last chance to take the victim's life. No. Because, as we know, the following day would see Miss Brett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. And the accused would never have an opportunity to dispatch her again. I mean, prison in Shanghai sounds like a, a pretty punishing deal. Then again, it is a British prison. They probably would have uh, given her uh, much more lenient treatment than the Empire of Japan would have. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. <laughs> All right, I believe we have a clear picture of the incident now. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration, instead continuing her research at the university. Wait, what? Obviously, over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other on a number of occasions. Seeing the murderer of the mentor for whom she had such great respect enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes. Even if it was only temporary, until Miss Brett's extradition, extradition to Shanghai. You can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Poor Ray. So, Your Excellency, if you'd be so kind as to peruse this exhibit. A photographic print that shows the scene of the crime immediately following the grim incident. Okay, there it is. Yes, thank you, Counsel. A tragic image. <laughs> I would hardly call it tragic. Okay, so what do we got? We got, uh, obviously, Giselle Britt lying face first on the floor. A wine glass that was dropped and spilled. She's in her bathing attire. We've got a uh, suitcase to the side there with a couple of her masks hanging there. Her purse at the back. I think that's her dress there, too. Jeez, this is a pretty fancy hut. As you can clearly see, the only tragic thing in this picture is the wine spilling, but uh, there is nowhere within the hut that anyone else could have hidden. Maybe they buried themselves in the sand. The court will accept this photographic print as evidence. The photograph of the crime scene has been entered into the court record. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case, but uh, hey, if you want to call it quits here, I'm all for it. <sighs> we intend to prove the accused's appalling actions beyond all possible contention. To that end, I can confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime and damning evidence. B witnesses? B but who? The detective, obviously. <laughs> One of whom, I might add. It's a highly respected police detective. Hmm, I wonder who it could be. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. <sighs> okay, well, it's always an uphill battle. Very well then, counsel. Bring forth your witnesses. Oh, oh wait, I actually have to bring my, my witnesses in? I thought you were just going to declare a guilty. Okay. I, uh, Taketsuchi Auchi. I've been waiting for this moment. Your Naruhodo clan goes down in flames today. I get my revenge. 
Sorry? Oh, yes, I haven't forgotten. That trial nine months ago, here in this very courthouse. When that irreverent little student boy utterly humiliated me! Tch. Ah! Ryanosuke Naruhodo! Yes? This insult to the Alchi family name will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Gunzel. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> the utter humiliation. <laughs> that transition. Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut and the bell of cultural enlightenment tolls. Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. Much like Asogi died. At the start of your own mini Meiji revolution. Are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence! S since I swore revenge back then, there's been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe! The ouchy growth. <laughs> oh, good. Wow. You see? You see this seed of hope sprouting forth from the barren expanse of my crown? I... I think that tiny growth is trying to tell me something. Oh, wait, you're talking about his forehead, right? Um, I'm afraid I can't really see. Where, where is the hope exactly? I said silence! Okay? Today, I face another yokel student of the Naruto clan. Well, I will vanquish you, and I'll take your hair. And my victory will be fertilizer for the seed of hope atop my head. You have been warned! Ha! Ah, with that, the prosecution calls the witnesses to the stand. It looks like the stakes are high on both sides in this trial. Prosecution and defense each has much to lose. A haircut is hardly comparable to raise life. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> well, well. Oh, okay. Soseki, you're here too. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Chief Inspector Sotaru Hosunaga, Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. And I am, well... The next big thing in books, an author renowned throughout the capital and back to yes. Soon to be sold out, the satirical I am a cat, so the sensational success by Soseke Natsume. Oh my goodness. Struggling student from the provinces, please. You needn't be in awe of me. I need it? It's only natural that you'd feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax. Call me Soseki even. Um, yes. What on earth is Seki-san doing here? Tread carefully, Sato. That author fellow knows you from your time in London, doesn't he? If he exposes you for who you really are, this will be over before it's begun. Yes. Yes, of course, I know. I presume Seki-san won't have forgotten about me. I saved his life, after all. I could certainly never forget him. Although he does seem to have changed somewhat in the six months or so that has been since I last saw him. Well, Sonaga, on the other hand, as for the Inspector Kusunaga, that amazing outfit is hard to believe. Do I have something on my face? Well, your glasses for one, although they don't seem to be helping you see. Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. <laughs> don't say you're in disguise like he has, because that would defeat the point. 